that's that's done. The next thing is to put the safety safety back. First of all, put the little spring, little safety spring in place. Now that springs back in place. The, then you can put the safety bar back in place. Now there's a little, a little kind of a pointed piece on the, on this side which goes into the, uh, into into the safety spring. So that's why you put the safety spring in first. Uh, it helps you to locate it now. When you put the, that in place, as a, the front end of the safety bar goes into a little hole in, on the underside of the top strap because it has to make contact with the, with the top lever to, so that the top lever pushes it, the gun back onto safe when you open the gun. It's called automatic safety. There's a, this is a safety thumb piece or safe button if you want to call it that and there's a little tiny nut fits on the bottom bottom of that and you just tighten it up with a pair of pliers okay now that's all in place we push the safe on or I should say off, push the top lever over, the safe jumps on. Okay, now, having done that, the next thing is we can put the, we can put the complete, put the gun back together on the stock. Now, I didn't take the triggers out and the trigger spring out because that's a, a simple job. Any nobody can get nobody can do that wrong. Except one thing I did forget. I do find that some people put the triggers back in the wrong sides. I've often found many a gun where they've got the back trigger in the right hand slot, the slot the front trigger should be in. And if if you look at the triggers on. On the on these gun all double guns, if it's a double trigger gun, the the triggers are shaped for the for, for to suit whichever uh, to suit the shooter. In other words, if he's right-handed, they're chamfered off to the to the right um, front and back trigger, and that's so the and also another thing, the the front trigger is canted over towards the centre of the trigger plate and the back trigger is canted the other way. That is, this is so with the slope on the one side and the canting of the triggers, it makes it easy to slide the fi one finger from the one trigger onto the other trigger to fire the other barrel. That's what it's done, why it's done that way. And if, if, the, gu if the shooter's a left-hander, left-hander, the, the triggers are usually in the same slots, but they, they are canted or shaped as the, on the opposite side or twisted that way, so that the fellow who's left-handed, he can slide his finger from one to the other pretty easily. Uh, which also brings me to uh, another thing I should mention is, if you, if you do bend a gun stock for a from right-handed to left-handed, and the shooter is a left-handed shooter, then you can twist or turn the triggers so that they suit a left-handed shooter. Um, a lot, a lot of them, don't, a lot of people don't bother with it. But if the, if the man, if the the, sh the gunner guy who owns the gun asks you about to do it, no problem. You just get the triggers hot twist them, 
clean them up and uh, recolor them. Re you can blue them or or ju you can recase harden them, um, or you can just blue them in a gla gas flame, whatever, just to make them look good. I'll put at this. Uh, I'll put the guard on at this stage, and ju that just screws into a. It's got a, a threaded portion at the front end that just screws into a little hole in the trigger plate. To turn it round till it's fully screwed up, and then back off a little bit so it's straight. Then get your stock. Now, normally, if I was putting a gun together, I'd have my little tin of um, my little tin with some um, a mixture of um, petroleum, white petroleum jelly and three in one aisle and a little, a little tiny brush in there. Just brush a little bit on the working parts, not a lot, just a smear uh, before you put it back together on the wood. Now first of all the action goes on, then you put in the trigger plate, just drop straight in, no, no problems, dead easy. Then take, get the front trigger plate pin. Well, there's only one, so the trigger plate pin in this case. Uh, that's fully arm. The, the screw in the, the slot in the, in the pin is running north and south. Next one in is the breech pin. And then when it reaches a point where it's tight, you're just pulling it up the last last turn or so. You can hold it in the vise and pull it up. Put your shoulder to it if you have to. You can get more leverage on it that way. Pull it up to the slot straight. Now, the beauty of holding it in in a vice and doing that like that is because you've got more control, you're not likely to slip. If you if you try doing it this way, it can rock about. You could your your turn screw could slip out of, out of the slot and you could you could mark it mark the wood here or scratch the top lever and your customer's not going to be too happy with you if you've marked his wood. So, and then the next thing is in the, put in the put in the in the hand pin, the back, the one at the back. Now there are some guns which don't have a hand pin. Some some old hammer guns have a little short strap with a, with a, just a breech pin and in the end of the end of the trigger plate they'll just have a little wood screw so some guns don't have a hand pin now is it a good a gun that is properly stocked will is it will be okay without a hand pin because gosh the triggers are tight on that that safe's tight the um, because the breech the breech pin does all the work okay the uh, The next last thing of all is to put in the guard screws. The last part of this job anyway. I've got to put the locks in yet. Now don't forget the front guard screw is the one with a little flat on the end. 
It's, it's nothing more annoying than to pick up the wrong one, put it in, in the wrong hole. If it, in this case you couldn't, they're different sizes, but if it has two of the same size, there's nothing more annoying than to, to screw up the guard screws and find you've got them in the wrong holes. Because you've got to unscrew them again and then put them in the right holes and screw them up again. That would be putting the locks in is the last job. Now normally, as I say, I would, I would just give these a little brush with a little bit of grease, grease oil mixture, just over the working parts and also on the, on the cocking lever as well. Um, and then put the locks in. Now, it's one in. That's the second one. Push the cocking lever up. That always helps. Now you can put the little, the front, pla um, the front lock plate pins in. While I'm doing this, I might mention that I just have to notice this has got this uh, stock has got what appears to be a gold oval in the stock. Now, some people they don't know what this is. It's it's called an oval. Now, I've, I. And people have said to me, what's it for? Well, I say, well, it's to put it so the, f the owner can have his initials put on it. But you see, at, at one time, you see now, there's one firm in England, Wesley Richards, they used to call that a crest plate. Now, somebody came up with a, with a little joke. If you're, if you're a working class, it's an oval. If you're middle class, it's an escutcheon. And if you're upper class, it's a crest plate. Like a, which which in, in, the, in England with their class system, it, it makes sense. But it's, uh, it is a rather nice name for it, a crest plate. But which is understandable because they rich people who had a family crest had the, their crest engraved on it. And you can still find guns to, guns knocking around today with, with, a, with a family crest on it or the, you know, the family name crest or whatever. Okay, that's fully assembled now.